Hey, you'll be Steve from the Old Yorkshire Geek. It's time to review season two finale of Star Trek Strange New Worlds Hegemony. Hegemony. I don't know how to pronounce it. <laughs> but it's to do with the Gorn. And it's okay. It's fine. But it's, you know, not amazing. I do have some problems with parts of it. Uh, but, you know, as a rule, it was okay. Um, it's directed by Maya Vrvillo. Uh, and written by Henry Alonso Myers, and uh, we get a, uh, another guest star, another another familiar face, although it's not a familiar face, but a familiar name uh, pops up in this episode, which were nice. Right, so let's just get on with the uh, the episode, shall we? Um, and we'll go through it. Um, there we go. We start off as usual with the. Uh, Marvel Cinematic Universe logo, not Marvel, Star Trek Cinematic Universe logo, off we go, right, uh, here it is, look, oh I forgot to mute it, didn't I, I forgot to mute it, there we go, and then we see the Enterprise whiz by, right, previously on, Spock and um, Chapel have broken up, um, La'an, Knows all about the Gorn. She's a Gorn survivor from her colony ship when she was a kid. Um, what's this? Uh, explosions. I can't even really remember. Uh, and then a son. Right, so we start off um, the captain's log from Captain Marie Battelle. Remember, she's the captain of the USS Cayuga. I still don't know what class of ship that is. I'm going to have to look it up. Uh, if I find out, I'll put it there. If I don't find out, I won't. <laughs> Um, so she's on the planet, um, I can't remember what they call it, Parmesan Beta. I know it's not that, <laughs> but it's, uh, that's close enough. And, um, she's on this planet that's basically a back lot. <laughs> that's, that's what they filmed it on. It looks like it, anyway. Um, it's like a small town. Uh, it's not, it's, I'm not entirely sure what it is. Is it an old Earth colony? that's decided that somehow we're forgotten about and now it's decided it wants to join the Federation. I don't know, but it's, it's made to look like a Midwestern town in the 20th century, obviously, 21st century. But anyway, the Cayuga's there to, to help, you know, with uh, some medicines and stabilised crops and stuff like that. And um, uh, Nurse Chapel's there. She's uh, hitched a lift. They must be on the way back to uh, wherever... Wherever Dr. Corb is doing his classes, Earth, I suppose. But she's hitched a lift on the Cayuga and she's helping out. Uh, and there she is, she's grateful for the ride. And um, so she beams back up to the Cayuga, as we see there. That's a, I don't know why they've decided to film this in this place. It, it's, I don't know, they needed a town. Um, anyway, so Battelle gets a call from... Um, Captain Pike on a pad, you know, she don't get it on the uh, the old communicator. Do, 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 do. Gets it on the pad, so she can see him. But never mind. And then um, it's basically checking up on it. Anyway, they seem fine. Oh, there we go. Parnassus beater, not Parmesan. <laughs> I thought it was a bit cheesy. But never mind. Um, so basically they have a little bit of a chit chat but then they, they get cut off there's like interference he says and he misses her and stuff and they're obviously still having a uh, they've still got their connection um, and there, there we, we learn that uh, communications are down and then a shuttle appears crashing uh, through the sky as we oh, hang on in a minute I've gone past it it's going to show us it Come on, show us. Show us. Probably gone past it. Here they are. Never mind. A shuttle came bombing out of the sky with all flames behind it. We'll learn later on who's on that shuttle. Uh, but then um, Independence Day arrives. <laughs> and it's not Independence Day. It's um, the fella from Guardians of the Galaxy. No, it's not. I'm lying. It's uh, a Gorn ship. But it does remind me of, um, I forgot his name now. That baddie from Guardians of the Galaxy, the first one. Um, right, so what's happening now? Um, they've, they've lost contact with the Cayuga and um, they can't scan 
because there's some sort of interference field up and then they get a a message from Starfleet Command and they're being in touch with the Gorn. Oh, no, hang on. I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, they get a message from uh, Captain Battelle. It's a distress call. She's managed to get that through somehow. Don't know how. But uh, that's it. They lost all communications, but she managed to get this distress call through somehow. So they're heading for um, Parnassus Beta or Beta, whatever you want to call it. And... Um, so he gets on the on the blower to Admiral April, and then um, they don't want to go. He's warned that they don't want to go to war with the Gorn hegemony. Um, there you go. So they've got to like um, be cautious and uh, not not start a war, basically. Now right, so the Enterprise arrives at Parnassus Beta. Uh, nice shot, I must admit. Nice. Uh, I still don't like how they come out, drop out a warp. I don't like it where they just. Vroom, Dead stop. I don't like that. I know it's not a dead stop. It just looks like one. But I prefer the old version where they dropped out of warp and you know glided by the uh, the camera. But I don't like this dead stop stuff. Uh, right. So they arrive at Parnassus Beta and they find there's a, a debris cloud. And um, oh, see, I've gone too far. Never mind. And they know it's the gone. I think. Um, to what happens, I can't remember, whatever. <laughs> they made the opening credits. Get past that. Right, so. Uh, everything's blocked. Communications, transports, all that. Sensors, sensors. Uh, they're all blocked. They, can't, they don't know what's going on. Uh, only way to the planet is uh, in a shuttle. But um, um they found the wreckage of the Cayuga, uh, and it's devastated, it seems. Uh, but he says, well, last time we spoke to Captain Patel, she was on the surface, apparently with a lot of her crew. Don't know how they, uh, don't know how he figures that one. I still don't know what class of ship the Cayuga is. I'm going to have to work it out. How big is it? Is it one of those? Is it Peregrine class? Or no, not not Peregrine class. It begins with S. Somnambulator. I don't know. <laughs> That's like a small version of the Constitution class. Is it one of those? I've no idea. But anyway, so they've got to work out how they can uh, get down to the surface. Um, then a, uh, a Gorn ship appears. Uh, a Gorn hunter appears. Uh, it doesn't attack him, it just, it's just sitting there. And then uh, Uhura gets a message from Starfleet, somehow. She says it's from outside the interference field. That shouldn't matter, should it? Because they're inside the interference field, so you'd think any signals in or out wouldn't get through, would you? That's the point of an interference field. But never mind. Never mind. But anyway, it's a message from Starfleet Command. Uh, they've been in, the Gorn have been in touch with them, and they've just sent them an image. And um, it's a um, uh, an image of uh, you know space with a, what's a demarcation line, and one side the Gorn's claiming the other side. <coughs> the Federation can have Starfleet's ordered them not to cross the line. There we go. There's the uh, the line. Um, so that the the, uh, the USS Kyuga is actually still in, you know, still on the good side of uh, of the line. But um, but they're still being attacked. Obviously, it was destroyed on this side. And it's drifted over there. I'm presuming that's what that means. Anyway, so they've got to got to figure out figure out a way to get the crew to save the crew of the Cayuga, and um, so that's what they're going to do. Uh, oh, my Sam Kirk uh, volunteers himself. Good man. Uh, by the way, there's the. Uh, oh, you can't see for me. But behind there, there's a, a nice uh, picture of the uh, the Phoenix Zephyrum Cochrane ship. But uh, anyway, so they're gonna go down in a shuttle. He wants. Um, um, Erica to, to pilot it. Um, oh, ah, yes, and uh, also another thing that um, I didn't uh, I didn't quite appreciate the do intraship beaming. Uh, the beam it beams a crate to the uh, ready room. By the way, it's another thing as well. It's called the ready room. I didn't know what they called this room. You know, I've said it a couple of times in, in my reviews. I didn't know if it was the captain's office or the observation, not observation. Um, Conference room, or what I didn't know what they call it, and it's called the ready room. And I didn't know that was a 
a phrase that they used in the original series. I thought that came around, you know, the next generation era. As I said, I thought they were called like conference rooms or captain's office and stuff like that. But anyway, it's the ready room. Anyway, the beam are cre- beams are create from some cargo bay to the ready room. And in the original series, although I know we know this isn't the original series, but the, in the original series, and this is before that, don't forget, um, it's mentioned that in, beaming inside the ship is tricky, apparently. You know, because you, you could end up in a bulkhead, apparently. That's what we were told in one episode. I can't remember which episode it was. But uh, we were told that beaming, intraship beaming, were tricky. Uh, and that was after this. But, you know, they do this fine. Anyway, they beam this crate. And... Um, it's got uh, some new weapons in that for the uh, to fight the Gorn. And there we go, here's a, uh, a pad. Uh, let's have a read, shall we? Because it didn't give you a chance to read it. So let's have a read. Uh, let's move my mic so I can get closer. Right, it is important that any response to an incident is well planned and executed, and those involved should be as familiar as possible with the Starship environment. Therefore, those responsible within the security forces for... Uh, responding to Gorn attacks against starships, whether in open space or in port, uh, should be uh, trained in the general layout and features of the types of ships most likely to be encountered, and starship captains in consultation with Starfleet Command should cooperate with the security forces in providing access to their ships to allow the necessary onboard education slash familiarisation. Now we've got phaser harmonics adjustments to better counter their defences, close range, wavelength, blah, 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 long range, and scanner recalibrations, tricorder scanner calibration, blah, 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 techno babble. So there you go. So it's like Gorn, weapons to fight the Gorn, as though they're like the Borg or something like that, but... Uh, it's amazing how the, the Gorn have suddenly become this amazingly bad enemy when they were barely mentioned in um, in the original series. But never mind. Right, so they've got these super duper weapons. Oh, they've got uh, nitrogen grenades as well, which will freeze a Gorn or anybody. But we don't see them used, I don't think, in this episode. Uh, right, so they've to uh, basically. Um, get a shuttle down to the surface without the Gorn finding out about it. And um, Erica suggests that um, there's lots of debris floating about and the Gorn aren't shooting at that. So they're going to disguise a shuttle as debris. So that's what they're doing. Here we go. The shuttle comes... Uh... Then that, It's all lit up though, isn't it? Are, are the Gorn idiots? <laughs> Can't they see that it's, it's, it's got its engines running and stuff like that? Can't they scan for life forms, the Gorn? Obviously not, but uh, anyway, they get by, and um, there we go, they, they enter the atmosphere, we saw this in the uh, trailer, didn't we, uh, they enter the atmosphere, and uh, it, she's going to wait until they hit 1500 metres before she activates the engines, which is, you know, pushing it a bit close, isn't it, but uh, anyway, obviously they do it, they're fine, and uh Pike's like, Woo! And she says, I thought you were a test pilot. He says, I was. <laughs> but anyway. Uh, Spock's trying to uh, find a way to get through the uh, Gorn interference field, but is not proving successful. Um, they're suggesting that uh, maybe they could look uh, at... Um, um, at the Cayuga and stuff to see if they can find if anybody's alive over there um, because there's, there's pockets of oxygen apparently the spectrographic analysis suggests there's pockets of oxygen so there could be crew alive over there and that's what she's saying is number one she wants Chapel to be alive too um, and Spock's saying he regrets their their last words they were in a fight and the split up and all that and there we go and um he wants to see. He wants to check sick bay for some reason. He must assume that she's in sick bay, and it says the Cayuga rotates once every two hours, and that's when sick bay will come around into view. So she says, get the Cayuga on the screen, and then 
somebody just says, I don't know, I think it's um, uh, Mitchell says, uh, sick bay's gone. Uh, he now just assumes that uh, Chapel's dead because sick bay's not there. She, he just assumes you were there. Never assume. Makes an ass out of you and me. Anyway, they get down on the planet, the the uh, the, the 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 landing party, and they see this. Uh, it's got they've got a sky beam of the the gone, and um, this is the this is the thing that's set, sending up the uh, interference field. So if, if they knock that out, the you know transporters and scanners and everything will come back online. Uh, so that's um, that's what they're going to do. Uh, right, so in the town, obviously it's 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 got burn little pots of burning stuff for some reason. <laughs> but um, right, so anyway, so they're making the way and the the they pick up uh, a signal. Um, there's a gone approaching, so they take cover, and it's there. It is. It's a youngling, a gone youngling. They need Anakin Skywalker. He takes care of younglings, doesn't it? It's a gone youngling, and. Um, um, oh, they shoot it. They shoot it dead. Very uh, Federation, eh? Uh, just shoot it dead. An innocent child. I know they're not. I know they're monsters. Because he said earlier on, did um, Pike, that they're gone are monsters. And he says sometimes monsters are just monsters. Because Captain uh, Admiral April suggested maybe, maybe they just don't understand. Um, but uh, anyway, so they kill the uh, kill the young Link and... and um, carry on their way. There was a Mabenga said it looked hungry and I think Laan says that means there's no, but no food left or something so they're suggesting that uh, everybody's dead. Um, then they hear um, dozens more approaching I think they said and so they head for the barber shop. I don't know how he knows where the barber shop is but he just says barber shop and they all run in instantly and um, Barricade the door and they're watching as uh, more younglings. There's one there, look, appear and they start eating the one that they've just shot. Right, meanwhile, up on the Enterprise, uh, Uhura's got an idea and she wants to put it uh, by Commander Pellier. So, we saw this in the trailer as well. Uh, she's got a crazy idea and says, you know, she likes crazy ideas. Um, Right, back on the planet, see lots of blood about. Obviously, bad things have happened there. And um, Laan says she doesn't understand why they're, they're not fighting each other. You know, they're just eating. They should be fighting for dominance. That's not happening. And Pike says, well, that's, we, we don't really understand everything about the gone. Right. So they're on about Battelle. And, you know, he's obviously worried about her. And... Um, Lots of blood about. And then we meet. Here we go. Why, well, they get to they find something in, in the back of the uh, building. And um, they get trapped behind the force field. And then this fella appears. And um, there we go. He's walked into this gone trap. And we learn that that's Lieutenant Montgomery Scott. An engineer. Uh, and it was his trap he set up. It was him in the shuttle that crashed. He were on the USS Star Diver, he said. There we go. Um, it was one system over. And they were, they were um, uh, investigating a, um, uh, the, the, the star, the next star over. And um, it got attacked by the gun, and Scotty escaped in the shuttle. I don't know how, you know, why did somebody else go with him? But it's Scotty, isn't it? He's in it for himself. Same, with, same thing happened with Franklin. He made sure his own transporter buffer had enough power <laughs> in the episode Relics. But never mind. Anyway, he escaped from the gone in a shuttle and he used, um, he created like a, a, not a cloaking device, but a, um, a sensor screen so that the gone would think um, it was one of their ships. So that's what he did. Anyway, then they find um, the rest, the, you know, lots of other people, townsfolk and crew of the um, um, Cayuga and Captain Battelle. They're all still alive. So there we go. So they're all had a bad time of it. 
Uh, oh, this is where they're saying they were all, that's, that's it, the Shang, Shang Di, Shang Dai, I can't remember, system. And um, it were released coronal mass ejections. And um, the gone sort of like came, when it cleared, the coronal mass ejection, all the gone arrived and destroyed the ship. But only Scotty, only Scotty survived. There's a lot of only one person survives in this episode. Well, two, two, uh, two examples. Anyway. Right, so there we go. It's just on about they built a Gorn transponder. That's how we got by. They thought he would have gone. Um, ship. So, so can you make another one? You know, so that they can escape. Um, aboard, you know, on the shuttle that uh, he crashed. They must, they must be aware that um, uh, they can fly it. But um, so they're going to do that. Uh, but not just yet. Uh, they've all got to have little talks first. <laughs> right. Meanwhile, back on the Enterprise, um, Uhura and Pelia have uh, had an idea. I don't know how, why Uhura came up with this, because um, it's nothing to do with communications, <laughs> but never mind. She has the idea that um, instead of, because they can't fire or shoot or do things like that to this planet, uh, with, or approach the planet without alerting the Gorn, what they should do is, is get some of the uh, debris in the debris field to um, fall out of orbit and basically hit the uh, interference tower beam thing and destroy that. So she suggests using the, the saucer section of the Kyuga, uh, getting somebody over to put rockets on it so they can adjust its its uh, trajectory. And um, and that'll, that'll destroy it because the Kyuga will, will make it through the atmosphere and destroy the, uh, the sky beam and uh, Spock... He uh, volunteers saying that only he can do it. Don't know why, <laughs> but he says that only me can do it. So we just take his word for it. Uh, but I don't know why they're suggesting this, because as far as they they don't know, that there's no survivors on, on the uh, Kyuga. Because uh, remember, the sensors are blocked, so they're just like saying, well, if it's like if our sensors aren't saying there's no survivors, then th there must be no survivors, but yet... The sensors are being blocked, so they can't tell if there is or not. Anyway, so they're going to do that anyway. So Spock's going to go over um, in a bit and deal with that. Right, back on the planet, they're all resting. This goes on quite a long time. This is like a panning shot that goes across seeing people sleeping. A bit of a waste of time. There we go, see. It. Anyway, uh, Pike uh, gets up and he decides he's going to go and find the shuttle. Uh, Battelle says, where do you think you're going? Pardon me. And he's going to go and see if he can get the uh, parts for Scotty's uh, gone transponder. And um, Scotty uh, hears them and he uh, says, you know, he should go as well. There you go. So them three are going to go and um, try and get the transponder that he made off the shuttle and maybe even get the shuttle to work so they can get some of the crew... Uh, back to the Enterprise. Right, here's the uh, saucer section of the Kyuga. Uh, obviously, you know, looks pretty badly damaged, but remember there are pockets of oxygen in there. But anyway, Spock's on his way. Uh, it's a nice uh, shot there with, with um, um, decks and stuff. Anyway, so we go inside and we hear the computer voice saying um, oxygen's almost run out. We see lots of people lying about and then we see chapel and she gets up and she's fine and she doesn't ask if anybody else is alive she doesn't say computer are there any other people left alive or chapel to you know go to a community on wall thing or something communicate and say chapel to anybody on the ship no she doesn't say that at all she gets power up uh she's got an hour an hour of life support uh, and then she looks out the window and sees the enterprise uh, in a minute, there it is, Enterprise there. So she thinks, oh, cool. And now I'm watching this, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> wave. Uh, she tries flashing the light. She gets a flashlight, a torch, whatever you want to call it. And um, but she gets a couple of flashes, but um, 
it, 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 it dies, so that didn't work. So, she's wondering what's going on. Uh, there we go, then we see Spock is in a, uh, uh, a, a space suit uh, with a, uh, a crate of uh, um, rockets attached to him. So here we go, lands on the, uh, the hull of the Cayuga and starts um, putting these uh, rockets for them to uh, adjust its trajectory. There you go, done the first one, and he's going to do the second one. Then he floats by the, just happens to float by the window that Chapel's at, just as she happens to be there. She sees him. Again, I'm like going, ah, <laughs> waving. But he doesn't see her, because he's obviously not paying attention, even though he's facing her. Um, so she thinks, right, she's going to get a, a, a space suit for herself. So, anyway, Scotty and the others and Pike and Battelle have arrived at his shuttle and... Um, is to get the 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 uh, transponder off, it says uh, she's looking for a welder. He says that should be over there. Um, but then as they're doing that, a gone youngling uh, uh, arrives. Uh, see, I've gone too far. Look, it's going to be there in a minute. There we go, clucking, growling, and a gone youngling. Um, there we go, appears. Uh, then we cut back to uh, the Cayuga. There she is in a space suit. And then we hear the computer saying, please input command code. And she's thinking, I think she's thinking there's somebody there. But then we learn it's a gone, a full grown gone. We're going to see it. There it is. Uh, looking like an alien. Well, obviously, it is an alien, but you know what I mean? A xenomorph. A xenomorph. But it's obviously some sort of space suit, but it's got a tail. So this is obviously a different sort of gone to the ones that we've seen in. The original series, Arena episode, and the Next uh, next Generation, and the Enterprise episode, um, um, In the Mirror Darkly. It's obviously a different sort of gong, it's got a tail. Unless that's part of the suit, I don't know, but um, it's trying to input the uh, command codes for the Kyuga, for whatever reason. Uh, it seems to be by itself. But uh, anyway, so I think she's going to make a... a Trying to make a, a dash for that Jeffrey's tube. Uh, there's the, the gone youngling in the shuttle. And it's not attacking them for some reason. Um, and it just runs off. And he says, what the hell just happened? Battelle says, we got lucky. But then we learn that Battelle is infected with gone spores, eggs, whatever. So she's going to give birth to be gone younglings herself. Right. Meanwhile, back on the Cayuga. Spock set up the uh, the second rocket. Uh, here he is, uh, and then for some reason he, he goes inside, and I don't really know why. Maybe I blinked and missed something, but uh, that is inside for some reason, and I don't know why. <laughs> he was outside on the hull, putting the rocket thing there, and now he's inside. I don't know. Is it the bridge? It could be. I think it is the bridge. Uh, anyway, that's a uh, the gone. Thing drops down behind him and it uh, grabs hold of him and uh, throwing him about. Uh, there we go. And then Chapel arrives and she gets knocked about. Uh, oh, there we go. We get a, a shot of the gone getting Spock and it's trying to crush his visor. You can hear it creaking. Um, I don't know. If mi I missed a bit. Never mind. Uh, Chapel grabbed hold of a phaser, the phaser floating, she grabbed hold of that. One of the special phasers that can kill Gorn. And she shoots him with it. It's a pew-pew phaser, not a psh phaser. So that's a, a point off. <laughs> but um, anyway, it distracts it enough. And um, there we go, Spock. Remember, Vulcans are really strong. He snaps off this uh, jagged metal bit and smashes it into the Gorn's. There we go. The Gorn's uh, helmet thus uh, exposing it to the vacuum of space and that basically kills the Gorn and um, off it goes floating away into space look right so this is where Marie shows him that um, she's infected there you go she's showing look there look that she's infected with Gorn eggs so he says we'll, we'll, we'll work it out meanwhile by the way their mission you know to get the uh, transponder didn't really need to do it because of what's happening here the Kyuga is entering the atmosphere uh, and um, 
Spock and Chapel just just float out, just leave it behind. They go. Never mind that they're travelling relative with it. They should be entering the atmosphere as well. Never mind, don't matter. The the float out there, and then they just stop and watch it going into the atmosphere. Look, goofy, goofy, holding hands. It's very Star Trek Discovery, isn't it? <laughs> but anyway, right. So. She's ready to uh, sacrifice herself to save everybody else. Uh, there you go. She's saying it's what Hemmer did. So Hemmer had no choice, but um, he says we do. But she's going to use the shuttle, fly it into the tower, and destroy it. But then they don't need to do that because, as we see, oh, they've gone too far now. Before they have chance to do anything else, the Kyuga arrives. Here it comes. Come on, when you're ready. When you're ready, if I do skip, it, it skips too much. Try, try this one, see if it does a little bit less. No, it's just safe, uh, never mind. Anyway, the Kyuga. See if I'm too far now. Yeah. Anyway, the Kyuga collides with the um, the tower, spit sky beam, destroys it, scattering field stops, you know, the interference field stops, so they can start beaming people out. Um, and um, um, uh, Pike says uh, beam up the survivors uh, they're in the uh, building two clicks is that how you spell clicks? I thought it was just clicks as in K-L-I-C-K-S but obviously I don't know uh, two clicks away and they're about to start beaming them uh, hang on let me see if I can find it but I was watching it let's see if we can show it Apol apologies for this by the way I've got to uh, do it that way, this way. Come on. If I press the skip button, it skips too much. <laughs> There's like two, two, things like the skip, it's like, does, I don't know, 10 seconds or something, I don't know. And then it's like frame skip, and it's, <laughs> oh dear. There's no in between. Come on, show us them beaming them up. There we go. Oh, see, I think I've missed it anyway. Never mind. They start beaming. You think they're beaming up the uh, the crew of the um, Cayuga and the townsfolk. But I watching it, I'm thinking, that one is a, a, a staffly transported thing. Because it was all like wibbly wobbly and green. And I thought, oh, bluey green. I thought, that's peculiar. Uh, and then it shows these arriving. Uh, Pike and uh, all that. Oh no, that's um, that's uh, Spock and uh, Chapel, isn't it? That's Spock and Chapel. Um, so maybe maybe I haven't missed it. Here we go. These are going to start beaming up now. I thought I'd missed it, but I haven't. So they're getting ready to transport these lot. But uh, as you'll see, and it, and the, there we go. That's not a Starfleet transporters pattern, is it? There we go. They get beamed up. Uh, but not to the Enterprise, we find out. Um, this is uh, Scotty and uh, Pike and Battelle. They arrive on the Enterprise, they get beamed up. Why didn't they go and beam them up as well? Don't know. Oh, sorry, I've spoilers. <laughs> anyway, they get beamed directly to Sick Bay. Because uh, Battelle, obviously, they've to sedate her and um, Chapel puts her uh, uh, behind a, a force field. There's Pike saying he's happy to see her. But they never mentioned the, the the rest of the crew on the Cayuga. Only she survived. They didn't even check to see if anybody else were in those other pockets of oxygen. I'm surprised they didn't have her. All they had to do, didn't they, was just have a little scene where she's on a communicator saying, is anybody alive? Or, computer, are there any other life signs aboard? And the computer could say, negative. That's all they needed, wasn't it? But now they've got me asking these questions. Stupid people. Bad writing, bad Star Trek writing, in my opinion. Uh, anyway, um, Scotty is going to go and help uh, Pellia, and it turns out they know each other. Um, she calls him Scotty, and she says he was one of his one of her best students, but got one of her lowest scores. So he's obviously you know a great engineer, but just not very good at um, um, probably following instructions and rules. But anyway, there we go. Sadly, received some of my worst grades. But anyway, so they've got to go and try and sort out this uh, this Gorn transponder. And then we've got more ships arrive, more Gorn ships drop out of warp. 
and um, they find out that um, they didn't beam up the survivors from the planet and it turns out that the, the be they were beamed to the Gorn ship uh, the big Gorn ship that's arrived so then they get um, there you go that's where he's saying that um, the re re reading residual transport signatures which were gone uh, then they're getting attacked by the Gorn there you go then all stuff's blowing up look uh, the bit, I think they've been told they've also had a signal from Starfleet saying you know do not you know withdraw basically um, been told to withdraw so what are your orders captain and he just stands there looking like that for an eternity as the Gorn ships are shooting at us <laughs> and um, that's that's how we see it and then it says to be continued there we go the dreaded phrase <laughs> the dreaded season ending phrase but uh, so we'll see what happens so the, the survivors and um, some of our crew members uh, are, be, are over on the Gorn ship. I'm sure we'll find out what's happened to them next season. And, uh, fun and fun and games will ensue. Um, but, that's it, we've, we've ended on a cliffhanger. And when are we going to get season three? Don't know, because of this silly strike that's going on. Don't even know if it's begun filming yet. But anyway, so they've ended it on the cliffhanger. It made Pike look a bit pathetic, to be honest, at the end, uh, with him looking as though he didn't know what to do. He's supposed to be one of the best Starfleet captains. He were in the list, remember, in on Discovery. Remember Saru wanted uh, asked a list of the, the most highly decorated Starfleet captains, and Pike were among that, so he should be in control and knowing what to do. But he isn't. Anyway, that's the end of the episode, the end of hegemony. <laughs> and it was fine. As I said, I had a few problems with it um, that would have been easy to fix if they were knew what they were writing. But, um, but it was fine. You know, I didn't mind it. Uh, not my favourite episode of the season. If I were going to give it a score, I'd give this one, I don't know, probably maybe the, a low score, to be honest. I'd, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, which isn't that good, is it, for this season? It could be my lowest score of the season, I can't actually remember. But uh, I'm going to give it a 6 out of 10, which is a shame, really. They, they always seem to drop the ball on the season finales. I don't know why. I don't know why. They can't write season finales, can they, can um, new trick. Anyway. Right, so, that's it. We've got to wait now, haven't we, for season three and see what happens. Obviously, you know, they'll save the day. Uh, I bet the uh, USS Farragut comes in and uh, uh, with uh, Kirk as the first officer. He'll uh, come in. This could be, I mean, maybe this could be where Kirk ends up taking command of the Farragut. Um, and this is how he could end up being captain. We will see, we will see. Let's say I'm just guessing. Anyway, right, so we're going to leave it there. So, as I said, 6 out of 10. I wasn't over impressed. I didn't hate it, but, you know, I wasn't over impressed with the episode, to be completely honest. Um, I don't know what they're thinking about with these Gorn. We know what the Gorn look like, um, and but the, for some reason they've just decided to make them look completely different than what we've seen. I mean, yeah, we don't want to see a man in a rubber suit, uh, but something that looked a bit like the Gorn that was so in Enterprise. That would have been fine. No tail. I don't think the one in Enterprise had a tail. I could be wrong, though. Um, it's been a while since I've watched that one. But, um, as I said, they shouldn't have a tail. Anyway, never mind. Right, we will leave it there. So, thanks for watching. Wherever you are, look after each other. And until next time, I'll see you there.